many believers carry the emotional trauma of shame. They think they have to live with it. It's part of them. That's a lie. Buried shame places limitations on intimacy with God. My guest conquered shame and now wants everyone, everywhere, to be free. It's so good to be free. Next. Welcome, Holy Spirit. I am so glad you're here. I plead the blood. I surrender this platform to you. Have your way. God, show us your glory. My guest, Michelle Steele, was raised in an affluent family, but became a drug addict, a criminal, and a prostitute. She tried to take her own life twice, died, saw hell, came back, and while still high on drugs, went to church. Michelle, what happened in that church? I was asleep through the <laughs> service. And thankfully, the preacher who knew the condition that I was in and knew the situation that I was facing came to the chair I was sitting in and woke me up. And he said to me, Michelle, do you want help? And I said, I do. I stood to my feet and I said, yes, sir, I want help. And when I picked myself up off the floor, <laughs> I thought at first that he had knocked me down. I had no understanding about the Bible. I had no understanding about the power of God. But before I could accuse him of knocking me down, I realized I was sober for the first time in eight years. <laughs> I was in my right mind and I could think clearly. And he presented the gospel to me. I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord, and I knew I was changed. I went home that night and I threw away all the drugs that I had, flushed them down the, the toilet. And because that church was in revival, I began attending church every night. So I am there learning about God, learning about the, the plan that God has for my life. It was such a far cry from the life that I had lived before, the addiction, the prostitution, the crime. I had not had a foundation of the word until that time of sitting in those services and where the power of God was moving and the, the word of God was being presented to me. And I began to see God restore my life. I got custody of my children given back to me. I got a real job for the first time in my <laughs> life. I began uh, walking in, in line with the Word of God, and God brought a, a wonderful man, my husband today, Philip Steele, who love, loves me like Christ loves the church. And God began to, to show me His restoration. and. As we began to put our family together, put our lives together, I had the custody of my children back and we were expecting our first child together. I was so excited because in my life before Christ, there was no joy about being pregnant. It was a very uh, difficult lifestyle, but here I am with a man who loves me, serving God, this is gonna be great, until I began to show signs that I was losing my child. And my husband, who was raised in the Word of God and knew God's ability to, to heal the child in my womb, he said, let's believe God. And when he said that, he was on board. He was in faith. But Sid, something happened that I didn't realize until sometime later, the full extent. I had a sense of shame stand up in me that I didn't even realize was, was there. It was buried. It was buried. It was, it was under the, you know, under the radar. It wasn't yeah. something I could put my finger on. I knew that the blood of Jesus had, at that time I received him as Lord and Savior, had cleansed me of, of the wrongdoing, had taken it off my record, had, had expunged right. the guilt of what I had done. I believed that, but I had a shame about the life I'd lived before Christ. And that shame began to tell me, this is happening because of all the sin that you did before. This is happening because you aborted your baby before you got saved. Oh. And all of that shame 
was in the place of the righteousness that should have been operating at that moment. I should have been able to reach into the covenant I had with God and receive help in my time of need. But instead, I accepted what shame told me and we ended up losing that baby. And um, it, was, it was a very difficult uh, situation for someone who had just began walking with the Lord. You know, I had people come to me and say, well, we don't know why God does some things like this and we don't know. God just needed another angel in his choir. And none of those things no. helped bring me peace where I was. But they weren't true. <laughs> yes, it wasn't the goodness of God. My husband, he spent some time in prayer and he came back to me and he said, Michelle, I found the answer in John chapter 10, verse 10. The devil comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. And somehow he found an open door, but I, I covenant with you as your husband, he's not going to find a way back into our lives. And then her miracle child. What happened? When we, a year later, began to find out that we were expecting again, I was at a different place in my spiritual walk because of a study that I had had with the blood of Jesus. Hmm. And this study revealed to me why I couldn't find my shield of righteousness, my breastplate of righteousness when I needed it previously. And this study had put me in a different place. When my child was born, she was born with uh, injury in the womb. She had, she had experienced trauma in the birth canal. And when she was born, she began to turn blue. And every time they would bring her to me, she would turn blue. And they finally took her out and had to emergency transport her to the children's hospital. But this time, when my husband took hands with me and he said, let's believe God, I took hands with him and said, my heart is fixed trusting in the Lord, I will not fear. And we were able to stand. And within a week of her being in the, the NICU of the hospital, the doctors came in one day and they said to the interns that he was leading through the in intensive care unit, he said, this is our miracle baby. She's healed herself. Well, we know it was the, the work of God that brought restoration to her. But when I look back at the two situations and the way that I was able to respond differently, I would have to recognize it was the faith I had in the blood that caused me to respond differently than I responded. And, and you know, most people, they don't even, in churches, they don't even talk about the blood of Jesus, or if they do, they don't understand. Tell me just very briefly, the difference between guilt and shame. Guilt is a condition that you find yourself in because of wrongdoing, because of a sin you have committed. For instance, you could find someone guilty in a court of law by presenting the evidence of what they did. If you were to confess to something, you would say, I'm guilty of that. It is the condition or the standing that a person is in. But shame is the feeling, the painful feeling in the conscience that that sin produces. I had dealt with the guilt, but I'd never dealt with the shame. Guilt affects the way God can relate to you, but shame affects the way you relate to God. Hmm. And that's what I had missed. And in that study of the blood, that's where I saw them differently. It was in that study of the blood because if you would have come to me and said, well, don't you believe? I'll tell you what, hold that thought. When we return, Michelle will teach about how to apply the blood of Jesus, and I haven't even heard this before, to our conscience and overcome all shame and all guilt and how to use the blood as a tool for deliverance. Be right back. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Hello, YouTube, Mishpocha. Mishpocha is a Hebrew word. It means family. This is Sid Roth. Welcome to my world where it's naturally supernatural. If you've been blessed by this show, please subscribe. Then click the bell so you won't miss a single episode of It's Supernatural. 
we now return to It's Supernatural. Uh, I don't know about you, but I want Michelle to teach me and you about what Jesus taught her about the blood of Jesus. When you recognize the difference between the guilt and the shame, that teaches you how to apply them separately, the blood being applied in both directions. If you would have asked me, do you believe that the blood of Jesus has paid your sin debt? Of course, I believe that's why I was able to receive him as my Lord, because I put faith in his sacrifice, that his blood was, was the appropriate sacrifice to cleanse me of the record of my wrongdoing, to take that, all of the sin that was piled up in my life and remove it off my record. But because I didn't understand that shame was not supposed to be still operative in my life. I had never applied the blood or didn't even know I could. I just had only really interacted with the blood that one time in my Christian life until I began to read. And then I found a scripture in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter nine. And it says, if the blood of bulls and goats was good to sanctifying of the flesh under the old covenant, how much more shall the blood of Christ purify the conscience so that we can serve God? And I began to, to verbally say out of my mouth, I believe that the blood of Jesus, I apply the blood by faith to that area of my life. Whenever shame would try to surface, I had to stop and deal with it and apply the blood to it and release my faith in the blood to cleanse me of that shame. Would you lead us in a prayer that we'll repeat after you right now? Absolutely, absolutely. Say this with me. I believe the blood of Jesus. I believe the blood of Jesus. Is supernatural in its power. Is supernatural in its power. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Cleanses me. Cleanses me. In every area. In every area. Including my conscience. Including my conscience. Setting me free. Setting me free. From shame. From shame. Condemnation. Condemnation. And every ounce of feeling. And every ounce of feeling. That separates me from God. That separates me from God. I believe, I believe the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus has, purified me. has purified me. The blood is supernatural because Jesus his blood was different than the blood of any man walking on this earth. The blood of Jesus had no connection to Adam's DNA. The book of Acts chapter 20 says the blood of Jesus is God's own blood. He says that through his own blood, the, that the church of God, which he has purchased with his own blood, the blood of Jesus was supernatural because Jesus is the Word made flesh. Jesus was legally born into the earth through the womb of a woman, but with no connection to Adam. So he, his blood was sinless at its onset. And then Jesus walked in this earth and never sinned. And because he never sinned, that blood remained a, an accurate sacrifice and a redeeming sacrifice. The only entrance we have into the presence of God is by the blood. Even under the Old Testament, it said that even the high priest could only enter in, not without blood. From the beginning, God has provided the blood as a means by which under the Old Testament to cover, but in the New Testament blood of Jesus, it is an entrance for us. And because it says in Hebrews 9, we purge our conscience, then it says, let us draw near with a, a full heart of assurance because we've been cleansed from the evil conscience. And because when, when you really begin to build faith in the blood, the evidence is in the way you enter into the presence of God. 
You won't draw back. You won't enter in with a, a lot of excuses or, or uh, failure feelings. Sure, if we sin, let's confess our sin, but He wants us to come by the blood. He wants us to come confidence. It says we enter in with boldness. That boldness is by the blood, it says in Hebrews chapter 10. People hear her teaching or read her books, and I tell you what, they start doing what she says, and they get free. I want you to tell me when we return about one person that heard your teaching and the great miracle that happened in their life, because that miracle is about ready to happen to you. Be right back. Right back to It's Supernatural. Call to get Michelle Steele's brand new book, Escaping Hell, a true story of God's miraculous power to restore a life bent on destruction, and her brand new three-part audio CD teaching series, The Supernatural Power of the Blood of Jesus. Plus, you'll receive her exclusive bonus CD, Freedom from Addiction. You can't get this freedom package anywhere else. All yours for a donation of $35, and shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9840. With Michelle Steele's Freedom Package, you will learn the difference between guilt and shame and how to once and for all get rid of both. Understand the supernatural power of applying the blood of the Messiah as your weapon to defeat the enemy's attacks. Be liberated from a bad conscience and low self-esteem over past mistakes and failures. Be restored as you experience an open path to a better future. I believe Jesus paid the price for the sins I had committed and that they were not laid to my charge. But I stopped at that first application of the blood of Jesus. That is why shame was still actively working in my life. I was having trouble connecting with God. You will also get Michelle's exclusive bonus CD, Freedom From Addiction, that will help you lift off the heavy baggage you've been carrying, break free from addiction of all kinds, receive healing and release from all the trauma you've experienced. Learn that you or your family and friends that you share this freedom package with are never out of reach of God's transforming love. Michelle includes powerful prayers for you to receive your healing, your miracle, and your supernatural breakthrough. Lord, let them experience the supernatural power of God as they read it, as they hear it, and as they apply it to their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Make this your call to action and get Michelle Steele's book, Escaping Hell, combined with her three-part audio CD series, The Supernatural Power of the Blood of Jesus, and her bonus CD, Freedom from Addiction. You can't get this freedom package anywhere else. Yours for a donation of $35. Shipping and handling is included. Ask for offer number 9840. Call or you can send your check to Sid Roth. It's Supernatural, P.O. Box 39222, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28278. Please specify offer number 9840 or log on to SidRoth.org. Call or write today. We now return to It's Supernatural. Michelle, a woman heard your testimony and told this same story to her son. Tell me what happened. This young man had been in a life of addiction. He was actually uh, put into jail and was facing uh, some charges for crimes he had committed during a drug time that he had been on. And, you know, she had heard my story uh, at a service that I had been at, and I had prayed with her. But, you know, she went, she, she was his adopted mother. And I, there was some shame and some rejection that he had sure. dealt with as a result of being adopted. And um, when she began to tell the story to him and share with him, you know, he was able to identify from the hope standpoint, but you know, being able to apply the blood in the areas of shame that not necessarily things that you've done, sometimes there are things that are done to you 
that cause shame, people that are molested as children live with the shame of what their, the person who violated them did to them. People who were adopted feel that rejection and that shame from that. So there are areas of shame that, that he didn't know how to deal with and those areas were helping hold that addiction in, in his life mm. because he wasn't able to, to walk free of it. And so when he was able to re receive that and understand how to apply the blood of Jesus, he could walk free from that in a way that he wasn't able to before. And he got set free from drugs and ended up being the, experiencing the favor of God and being able to walk free without any prison time and is now serving God today and walking with the Lord. Now, Michelle had an open vision. That means, I guess, that you're awake Yes. And you see it happen like on a TV screen yes. almost? Tell me what happened. In this, I, I went up for prayer in a service and the power of God came on me when the minister prayed for me and I began to see in the spirit. I was, I was there in this mm -hmm. vision and there was a multitude of people. I was on a small little pedestal above them, just barely lifted uh, to the place where that they could see me, but I was wearing tattered garments. And as I wasn't embarrassed about the tattered garments, as a matter of fact, I wanted them to know about my tattered garments. And there was an unrest. You could, in that multitude of people, you could sense the unrest and the dissatisfaction and the frustration in their life. But I began to lift up my voice and to explain garment by garment why this garment was tattered and what had happened to cause these tattered garments. And the moment that I had their attention, I pointed them to Jesus. He was up on a high pedestal in glory, in, in, this, in this brilliant light. When I came out of that vision, I knew that those tattered garments were the, the parts of my testimony, of things of, of, that God has delivered me from, the prostitution, the near-death experiences, all, all that God has done for me is to help point people to Jesus. You're a free woman. Yes, sir. And as someone said to me that observed you earlier today, I see something so special in her eyes. And I said to him, you know what you see? you see the light of God. Is the light of God in your eyes? Do you want to know God? If God could forgive Michelle of what she did, and if God could forgive me of what I did, God is more than able to forgive you of what you did. I want you to repeat this prayer out loud. Mean it to the best of your ability. And it's time for you to know God and shine the light of God and let all people know there is a living God that loves you and loves them. This is God's moment for you to have your own encounter with the living God. It may not be at this second, but you open the door and watch God embrace you. Repeat out loud this prayer and mean it. Mean it to the best of your ability. That's all God's asking. Say out loud, Dear God, Dear God I've committed many sins. Committed many sins. I, am so sorry. I am so sorry. Thank you for your blood, you for your, blood. Your, precious blood. your precious blood. It washes away all my diseases. I plead your blood on my conscience. All shame is gone. And now that I'm clean, Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my Savior. I make you my Lord. Amen.